Hi, my name is Dana Gasparini and welcome to this segment of Penn Voice. Today I'm joined by Don Cecil. His company is Public Affairs Associates, but today is representing Sam Cita, the San Mateo County Economic Development Association. We're going to talk cars, planes, trains, bike paths, everything you can imagine in mobility and transportation. So thanks, Don. Happy to be here, Denny. Thank you for So me. I'm going to start by this. Um, if anyone opened up a newspaper today or looked online, they're going to find conversations about high-speed rail, electrification, toll roads, bridge expansions, um, local local um, expansion of roadways. They're going to look at BART's expansion. They're, I mean, there's the ferry systems. Mm -hmm. And then, and to add on top of that, then you've got agencies like Samtrans and Caltrain and BART and the MTC and the TA and the Department of Transportation. I mean, it's almost like it's alphabet soup, and there's so much that's happening within each of these jurisdictions because... There's one train jurisdiction, and then there's a bus jurisdiction, and then there's roadways, right? right? So how does the public keep track of all of this? Uh, you know, Danny, in some ways that's the impossible task to do. There are over 20 cities in San Mateo County. There are over 25 school districts in San Mateo County. We have the Board of Supervisors. We have the College District. Throughout the Bay Area, there's, I think, 27 different transportation agencies. What the average person knows in their day-to-day -day life is they're surrounded by traffic congestion. Right. That it's impossible get to get to work some days. That it's impossible to drop your kids off at school. And you're just struggling to get to Trader Joe's and get dinner on the table because you've been battling with traffic all day. Right. What I can tell you is this is one of the most exciting times that I've ever seen in the world of transportation in terms of the possibilities that we have for solutions. And why is that? Well, 2017 was, um, was a landmark year for the state of California. San Mateo County is represented by some incredible um, elected leaders in Sacramento. We have our state senators, Jerry Hill and Scott Weiner, and we have our state assembly members, Kevin Mullen, Phil Ting, and Mark Berman. They, along with the governor and a lot of different people, a lot of different organizations, you had business, labor, um, uh, many people lining up to pass SB1. So SB1 was basically the first comprehensive effort to fund transportation improvements across the state of California. It was the gas tax increase that went into effect in November of 2017. And then this year, as people um, get their vehicle license renewals, they'll see an increase on that as well. For 10 years, that is gonna fund billions of dollars worth of transportation and traffic congestion solutions. So then how do they prioritize? So I can imagine it's a statewide initiative. Mm -hmm. Money is now going into statewide pot. So even in just our Bay Area, we have five counties. Right. Right? So, and I know that there's always these regional efforts to improve these regional systems, whether it's a highway or a rail system. How do we compete with other counties or other regions throughout the entire state for this money? Where, where is that prioritization of utilizing those funds then going to be, and how do they do it? Sure. So the first thing to recognize, you know, the, the days of San Mateo County being just a bedroom community right. where people lived and either worked in San Francisco or drove down to the Silicon Valley for jobs, those days are over. The peninsula is part of a corridor of innovation and economic, uh, economic powerhouse. Right. That's unprecedented in most any other places in the United States of America. So the private industry is gonna help us then really bolster yeah. our chances. So we are a priority. In all of the discussions that were happening in Sacramento last mm -hmm. year leading up to SB1, it is recognized that you have gotta, you have, we have to address congestion on the 101 corridor. We have to solve the bottleneck at 101 and 92. We have to improve the interchanges at Woodside Road and you know somewhere up near Produce Avenue in the South San Francisco area. It has to get better because this economy is too important, not only to the Bay Area, but the entire state of California and even the United States. So, so we are a priority. So there's one approach, and that, and that is if you look st strictly at highway, freeway, road access, right? So basically cars, how do we get more cars um, onto an already congested system? 
That's one, one approach. The others are to look at all the other modes of transportation, right? I mean, whether it be ferries or whether it be bike lanes or whether it mm -hmm. be train systems, BART, connections, electrification. So is that also included in? Absolutely. And how we um, compete for these dollars, these SB1 dollars? Absolutely. So in addition to SB1, let me just get one more thing in there. Okay. Um, Caltrain received the final piece of funding that it needed last year to fully electrify the system from San Jose to San Francisco. This is huge. This is going to mean a modern Caltrain system. It's gonna mean uh, electrification, which allows faster service, carrying more people, and it's better for the environment. So will they use the same tracks or will they build additional tracks? They'll use the same tracks. Okay. And so you're then... gonna see you're gonna see a project mm -hmm. which has minimal impacts, mm -hmm. at least from my perspective, and it's going to have amazing benefits in terms of carrying people faster between San Jose and San Francisco, providing more frequent service mm -hmm. and carrying more passengers. Right. In a uh, environmentally friendly way, Absolutely. right? Instead of diesel fuel. Absolutely. It's electrified. And, and to your specific question, you know, you can no longer look at anything as either just a freeway project or a project that gets people out of their cars. What's so exciting about what is being looked at right now in San Mateo County by the San Mateo County Transit District, which runs the Samtrans bus system, Caltrain, and also administers the Transportation Authority, which is large infrastructure projects. Mm -hmm. um, as well as CCAG, the City and County Association of Governments, and their partners at VTA in San Francisco, at MTC, um, we're looking at a way in which you transform the way we move. So yes, it's about getting cars on the freeway to be more efficient and move faster, possibly through express lanes, upgrading interchanges, but our local transportation agencies are also looking, about pub looking at public express bus service. Right. So if we add an express lane onto 101, how can we then add public express bus service that picks San Mateo County residents up where they live and drops them off where they work, reducing those single occupancy vehicle trips? Right. We have Lyft, Uber, Scoop, Chariot. I mean. We have companies that are revolutionizing the way people move without having to drive their own car. Right. And I know I've said bicycles a couple of times. I mean, we, we absolutely. absolutely know that we have what we would call a commuter that's riding their bike from San Francisco all the way through to Redwood City because there is there happens to be an expressway that they can And we have to make it. it safe right. for people to ride their bikes. We have to make it safe for people to walk. Right. So one of the things that I am hoping, you know, again, we have 15 minutes to mm -hmm. talk about a really complex Issues. So I'm hoping that our viewers sort of see that, one, we have these multi-jurisdictional agencies that kind of have their own focus, whether mm -hmm. you're, again, Caltrain or whether you're Sam Trans or whether you're someone that might look at ferry systems. But we are looking at all these agencies for, for first time ever, really, there's this regional and statewide effort that's going on where these multi-jurisdictions are coming together through either a city county association of governments or even through organizations like SAMCETA. SAMCETA's stake in the game is they represent businesses in San Mateo County. So it behooves um, our private sector to be able to move their employees. We won't be able to get into housing today because that's an, another topic for another 45 minutes. Which but, I'm happy to come back and talk right, about that. But it, I just don't want our viewers to think that the housing element of building housing where you work is not part of the conversation. It is. It's just not something that we're going to be able to hit on today in right. our short 15 minutes. We're, but let me throw one statistic sure. at you. And that one statistic is that between the years 2010 and 2015, San Mateo County's economy added about 75,000 jobs. Right. The cities and the county within San Mateo County only approved just under 4,000 housing units. Right. So you are going to have traffic gridlock when you add that many jobs right. and so few housing units. Right. I, I think we all get that. I yeah. think we all get that um, equation. The, the other side to that is if we said, okay, let's slow the development of office or of any new um, private industry or industrial park because we don't have the housing units, then we also slow 
the opportunity for this private partnership to build some of the infrastructure. I think you'd agree that today it's a very unique time in the sense that the day of local, state, and federal governments paying 100% of the price tag to build a bridge or to do freeway expansion or to build um, transportation, um, other alternative transportation methods, ferries, et cetera, are, are gone. So without private partnership where you might have a Facebook who puts in a million dollars to help fund uh, a study for the rail corridor at Dumbarton, or you might have your private industry look at their own transportation systems to move their employees. Um, this is how we're going to resolve sure. some of the sure. major so you ask, issues. <clears throat> what is Sam Cita's skin in the game? Yeah. So the Sam Cita is the San Mateo County Economic Development Association. It was founded in 1953 here in San Mateo County, and it continues to represent some of the largest employers in this county: um, healthcare, social media, developers, traditional technology, manufacturing, everything. Um, the first people who are going to stand up and recognize that we have to solve the traffic and the housing crisis are these major employers. Right. Because, you know, everyone would like to think that people come from somewhere else to their jobs in San Mateo County, and that's simply not the case. There are people who work in all of these companies, the logos that everyone recognizes or sees when they're traveling up and down the county, who are residents, right. who are constituents, who are your neighbors in Redwood City and neighbors of people in Burlingame, South San Francisco, and all places in between. So Sam Cita worked with some major employers in San Mateo County to create the Peninsula Mobility Group in 2016. These are companies that are hyper-focused on working in partnership with local governments and the transportation agencies mm -hmm. to find the solutions to these traffic problems. So as you mentioned, Facebook is one of the companies who stepped up and contributed a million dollars towards the feasibility analysis of the Dumbarton Rail Corridor. Um, Facebook and Google partnered to provide funding for an environmental phase of the 101 Managed Lanes Project, which is a project which is evaluating the addition of an HOV and express lane on Highway 101. Right. Um, the private sector um, is as much of a constituent in solving the issues of traffic and housing as anyone who lives here. Because it's about not only their competitiveness, but their employees live here. Their employees have to get to work. They must have work-life balance. They have families. They need to have a life. So they're in it in partnership with the elected officials and everyone, all the other stakeholders in San Mateo County. So if there's something that our viewers are gonna walk away with today, because we have just about a minute left, mm -hmm. what do you wanna make sure that our viewers um, gather from this conversation about transportation, public-private partnerships, the work that SAMC is doing, the regionalism that's mm -hmm. happening um, in taking all stakeholders, including the average neighbor, the average public person, to get feedback on all of these different modes of transportation and ideas and regionalism of, of solutions. What do you want our viewers to walk away with? Uh, I want them to walk away with the knowledge that 2017 set the stage for 2018. And this year, voters are going to be asked to um, approve bridge toll increases in the okay. form of Regional Measure 3, which will likely be on the June ballot in San Mateo County. What's in it for San Mateo County? Funding for Highway 101, the Dumbarton Corridor, 101-92 Interchange, um, ferry service, possibly finally expanding ferry service from South San Francisco to Redwood City, um, and addressing some of these major bottlenecks and gridlock. Um, there's also an effort to potentially place a half cent sales tax on the ballot in San Mateo County to fund local projects right. that benefit the way people live and move in San Mateo County. Well, John, thank you so much for joining us on Penn Voice today. I think what we could probably do is just, if our viewers want to gather any more information, they can jump on the Sam Cita uh, website and um, all the kind of different publications and, and news alerts and updates are, are on that website. So. Thank you so very much. I have a feeling we're going to be seeing you quite regularly in this next year, considering we will have a couple of ballot measures coming up soon for our voters to chew on. So thanks again for joining us. Thank you, Danny. And um, hopefully we're not all um, confused about our transportation opportunities, but I think that what we heard today is our opportunities coming um, in a very short order. So thanks so much for joining us, and we'll see you next time on Penn Voice.